Hey, what's up, YouTube? Today we're going to be working on the Toyota pickup. And we're going to be doing the front suspension and the front uh, drop spindles. So this is what we have. The spindles from Beltec from 84 to 95. Toyota pickup. Drop spindles. They drop uh, two inches in the front. And we have some studs for the wheel hubs. And then we have these uh, tie rod ends. We're also going to do the steering. So these are the tie rod ends. And then we have the upper and lower ball joints. We have some more steering stuff. These are... Oh, these are the control arm bushings. I think these are the lower. And then we have these. I think these are the upper. And we have... Uh, oh, these are the these are the strut bar bushings, the ones that connect to the front of the truck, the little front end of the truck. And we have these inner or outer tie rod, one of those. And we have this tie rod. on the passenger side we have the steering stabilizer we have the drag link and we have the front shocks from Beltec so we're gonna do all this right now and we're gonna measure the front end of the truck to see how much it's really gonna drop so right now as it sits we are at about 25 and 3 quarters 25 and three quarters or 25 let's say 25 and a half yeah let's say like 25 and a half so let's jack up this truck put on some jack stands take off the wheels and start taking it all apart all right so we're gonna start off by loosening this torsion key torsion bar so we're gonna loosen the top nut first all the way to the top and then we're gonna loosen the second nut to start getting the tension off of the controller and once we get the tension off we're gonna so we have to count the turns it takes to get the tension off so when we put it back we could put it back to stock and we're gonna pull this uh, torsion bar off and replace the bushing i don't know if the bushing is in the front or back here and then because uh, we're gonna have to remove this either way uh, since we're gonna remove the control arm and everything uh, we're gonna try to spray the control arms down or something I don't know yet but so yeah that's, this is where we're gonna start off and then we're gonna come up to the front and work on everything else so let me find a wrench for that torsion key all right so we got the torsion bar basically off we got the screw all the way out and there's these two nuts right here in the part that sits on top so I'm put these back and then um we have to take these off to 12 millimeters but before we pull the torsion bar off we are going to mark it right here because it's it has spines so just in case we just want to put it back to where it was so i'm just gonna put a little there right there. Oh, shit. i'm just gonna put so i'm just gonna put a little line right here just so i could line up when we're done and then um i think we should be able to pull it off i'm gonna try to pull it off if not i'm gonna have to remove these and then we're gonna start removing the bolts for the caliper so we can just put it aside and let the whole thing drop just finish removing the brake caliper so all these bolts all these four bolts are 17 millimeters so I remove the caliper first, then the bracket. And since we're gonna remove the spindle, all this has to come off. And these brake calipers are also gonna get replaced with some that are a little bit bigger. So stay tuned for that video. See right here, the little rubber thing is gone. And when we would brake with this truck, it would wobble. 
So now we're going to, uh, we're gonna hang this off to the side. We're also gonna rep uh, replace the brake line. You see, it's pretty bad. Put this off to the side for now. So next we're gonna remove this shock. Put some WD-40 on it. And I think it's like a 15. So we're gonna grab the top with some, some pliers while we rotate this with the wrench. And then we'll go ahead and do that to the bottom. Well, the bottom, we just use the, it's the 15 probably. From underneath, there's two bolts and pull out the shock. Okay, so these bottom bolts are size 12. And I pulled out the shock from underneath. Now we're gonna get over to this tie rod and we're gonna pull the little, um, the pin out and remove the castle nut and just hammer it out. And let me get through that real quick. I think it's a size 19 probably. Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this dust cap. And we have to remove this little cotter pin. Oh shit. And remove this. And size 30, so we're gonna try to break this loose. Fuck. All right, so it wasn't even tight. I just put the breaker bar on there and I just turned it. It's not supposed to be super tight, so it came off pretty easy. So now we will be removing this dust shield. We're gonna remove these cotter pins again, these two bolts, these nuts, and take it off because I think we're gonna use it on the new one. And yeah, so let me get through these real quick. Yeah, these are like size 12. Let me get these off. Let me get all four of these. Okay, so these two were 12, and then these are 17s. And the bolt that goes straight to this string wire, or whatever you call this. So you have to remove this, this in order to get to the uh, ball joint. We're gonna put this aside for a little bit. Meanwhile, we're gonna remove this cotter pin again, top cotter pin, and then break this loose. Put some D40 on it. Gonna hammer it out. This one's gonna be a little more tough, but. So yeah, let me get through this real quick because it's hard to hold the camera and do all that. Okay, so we were able to remove the upper ball joint. So you just get that out of the way, and we also smack the bottom one a couple of times. It just slides off. So that's the old spindle. I'll show you a side by side once we get the other one out of the box. But we're gonna continue tearing this apart. So we're gonna remove this uh, strut bar. I think this one's called. So there's two 70 millimeter bolts, which are these. We're gonna remove those and then uh, we're gonna see what's up there in the front in the bit. I think it's probably like 30 millimeter. Okay, so we had removed the 70 millimeters right here, uh, these bolts. And then we went to the front to try to remove that nut from this, the other end of the strut bar. So we had to come back and put these bolts back on and we broke it loose. So now we're gonna remove the whole thing. So there you go, that's the bushing that we're gonna replace as well. I don't know, but um, I forgot to show you guys, but when we would turn all the way to one side, um, we would hear a really loud clunk. So I don't know exactly what it was, but that's why. Well, that's one of the reasons we're replacing everything. So now I think we're gonna do this nut right here. Or, yeah, I think. Shit, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I think we're gonna do this nut and then we'll do the control arm and then we'll do the steering last. So 
that nut might be like a size 30. Well, let me get that nut from right there and put it on top again so we won't lose it. And uh, we didn't move this uh, nut back here. We just did the top. So when we go back, we're gonna tighten it and it should be back to where it was originally. Okay, so I have the lower control arm out. And um, so we broke that loose with a one and one sixteen socket. And then we just tapped it all the way in. So this has splines as well. And it slides into the to this piece right here. And that's held on by these two nuts. So we got it all the way through. You don't have to remove this. We just got it all the way through and um, it came out. So, so now we're going to work on these upper control arms. So it has two, two bolts through here. These two uh, threads that you see are from the bolts that hold it in. And then I guess you just fish it out through here. So this is the bushing that we're gonna be replacing for this lower control arm. I don't know if we could just hammer it out. I don't know, I don't know how, how this one's gonna work, but let's see if I can remove it. I don't even think we have the right bushing for that, but we'll check that out in a bit. So let me get to these bolts up here and remove this upper controller. Okay, so we removed the two bolts. There's a controller and we put the bolts back and it has each side has a spacer. Well, this side had one and then the front had like four. They're different sizes, so make sure you keep them on the side that they go. This was for the front, that's for the back. So this is the upper, this is the lower. And so now we're gonna work on removing the steering on this side. And this has taken roughly about an hour and a half, maybe two. Well, we got this far so i'm gonna remove that i think those are like 14 millimeters no i think like 50 no yeah these are 14 so i remove i'm gonna remove those three 14s and then this 12 millimeter for the steering stabilizer and then i should be done with this and then i'll start replacing all the bushings and put it all back together so let me get to this real quick all right so we got everything out the steering is all off on this side. Basically everything is off. Uh, so we're gonna start with this lower control arm bushing. And um, I guess it's pressed in here. It has a metal, little metal casing. And uh, I don't know, it seems okay. But then again, it's 30 plus year old uh, truck. So we're just gonna replace it. We were gonna spray all this down, but I don't know. Kind of too much work hitting it with the wire wheel and painting it and then we still have this to paint kind of want to make this black just so it could look a little cleaner but maybe later on down the line so i'm gonna have to run to AutoZone and rent the tool to remove this because i tried hitting it with the hammer but it's not coming off so i was able to borrow this ball joint removal kit so we're gonna try to pop this brushing out right now we finally got this bushing out. We hit it with the chisel and we pushed out the pin. And we got this one in. We had to hit it with the hammer and we used the, that little cap that came with the tool to hammer it in. So now we're gonna put the lower control arm back on and uh, we cleaned it up with some degreaser. This is still the old ball joint, so that's gonna come off once it's installed. So this has some like little grooves in here and i don't think it has an exact position of how it goes in but you do have to tap it in that's basically the bolt and then uh yeah so we're gonna do that real quick next we're gonna do these uh strip bar i think that's what it's called strip bar bushing and we went with these polyurethane bushing so one reason we didn't get poly for everything is because uh, they squeak a lot from our past experience. So kind of didn't want to deal with all that noise. So 
gonna slide this off. And then I'll put these on here. There's, I think there's a part number right here. So one kit came with four pieces. Slide this on top. Oh, actually, we have to slide this through the bushing, I think. And all four should be the same. So let me let me do this with two hands. Then we're gonna put it back in. We removed the ball joint. This is the old one. It's not that bad. It's actually pretty stiff still, but we're gonna replace it already. It looks pretty old. This is the new one. So going with the cotter pins and the little grease fitting. Uh, we're just gonna have to uh, use, reuse these old bolts because it didn't come with new bolts. So I'm gonna slide it on here real quick and we're gonna tighten this up. Okay, so we got the ball joint in. We have this bushing in for this piece, the new bushing back here. And if you guys remember, we marked the torsion key for the bar to go in. So that's next. We're going to put that in and we're going to clean the old grease from that side and put some new grease and then uh, then we'll start with the upper control arm bushings, which looks like it's going to be a hassle because of this setup, but we'll see if we can get through with it today. We put the control arm up here on the vise and we hammered away right here on one side, so basically like this on this side. And then we got it with the edge, it's this big ass like chisel. So we were able to get one side out. So now for the other side, we're gonna slide this off. Hopefully. Oh, I'll have to get it off of the right side. And we can't find the, uh, we can't find the, our tripod. So that's why we haven't been recording the actual things that we're doing, but this is what it is. So for this one, then we should be able to fit in the vise and kind of work our way around it easier. So let us do this real quick and then we'll see how we get it back on. For this side, it was way easier. So I just got it on here and then I hit it on one side a couple of times, I guess just to break this like seal it creates. And then I put it in between the vise and I hammered the shit out of it. Then it just flew out. So there's a little, little lip right here where it sits. So now I'm going to put the new ones on. I guess the first one should be easy to go in. Just hammer it in. The second one's going to probably be a problem. Unless I find like a, a socket that fits around this. There's a stupid thing that goes in the middle. So. Shit. Okay, so it goes like this because this side has the wear of the washer. Or the bolt head. I was able to put both of them in, but I fucked up the little edge of the actual bush and housing but they went all the way in I mean if it gives us problems then we'll order some brand new uh, controller but for now this will do it's a hassle though I mean it's easier once you get the first one out but the second one you just hammer it up to take them out but to put them back in uh, I was using this thing again it's all fucked up so I think I'm just gonna slide them in and install them and then since it's getting dark, tomorrow we'll continue. Actually, we just went ahead and threw on the control arm. So now we're gonna remove the upper ball joint. These are 12 millimeters. I'm gonna have to use a wrench and a socket and we're gonna get these off and then put the MovTech on. So we're not doing the flip thing where you put it on top, we're just gonna leave it like this. And um, later on, if, you know, we have to flip for flip it for whatever reason because i've heard it uh fixes your camber and if we, ha we have camber issues then we'll do it we'll flip it but for now all right so one more thing uh forgot to mention that the ball joint does the new ball joint comes with bolts and nuts and the old the old ones were 12 millimeters these are 13 and this little nipple thing right here is at eight millimeter so we're gonna install them for the lower one so now it's ready for the spindle all right, so I got these all tightened up and this is the dust shield that goes here. So the old bolts from this top piece, they, they go right in. These um, 
since the old bolts go all the way through, these need two new bolts and the kit doesn't come with it. So we have to run to the store, get some bolts for these two. And also we're gonna cut this off because it hitched right there, right by the ball joint, right here. So I'm gonna cut this with the grinder. And one more thing that we're gonna throw on there, before, well, right after we cut that is this, um, I forgot what it's called, it goes right here. So I think those are like 14 millimeters. So I'm gonna reuse the old bolts. And this was from Moog, has a 555 stamped on there. It's gonna go right there. We just got back from the store. We picked up two more bolts. Well, four actually, two for each side. This was the thread pitch M8 1-25. And we got the 60 millimeter bolts. So these are halves for 30 millimeter. And these are 12s, 12 millimeter. And we also put the shock in. I don't know if you guys can see it. And for the shock, there's this bushing. There's this bushing that comes with it and so on one side it has this little piece and on the other side it has the wider one so you have to see what side your truck takes um, and for this truck we use the smaller side so they sandwich together the two small sides and these were on the outer sides of the shock so oh, we also have to remove oh and for these bolts you also have to get washers and we're just using the ones that came on this piece, the steering piece. We also have to remove this little, I don't know what this is, like this little stopper for the steering. We're about to take that off right now, and then we're going to throw it on that knuckle before we forget. Right here on the driver's side, it was more of a headache. Uh, well, for this, the pitman arm, we just removed the bolt and hammered this out. And everything came out pretty easy, but the control arm, uh, it was a hassle because the steering shaft, I'll show you guys right now, but there's a, a steering shaft up here, which has given us a bit of an issue. So now this thing should be able to come out, hopefully. Oh, yeah. so, so this part would hit the st the steering shaft so what you do is you remove the bolts from what do you call that the so you remove the bolts i mean the two nuts from here rock auto has it as steering coupler but there's another name for it i forgot the name but anyways so I removed the one that holds the whole coupler to the steering box so I could have some room to move it around. And then I just undid the two nuts from the actual steering shaft enough to back it off and lift it up out of the way. So now that this is off, we're gonna wash everything and then um, and then start putting it back together with the new bushings. So on the passenger side, put everything back, show you guys. Everything is back in except the steering stuff and that'll go la on later on. All right, so now we're gonna start taking off these sleeves for the tie rods. And we're gonna do it on both sides. And I think that's, no, those are the only pieces that we're actually gonna use from this. So loosen them up and then just twist them out. Start putting the new tie rods in. All right, so last night while putting the bushings in for the controller, we messed them up. So I ordered some again on Rock Auto, and we're gonna wait on those. And also the tie rods, he gave us wrong tie rods for the outer tie rods. So we're gonna we're waiting on those as well. Meanwhile, I'm gonna clean up and and yeah, just. 
tightening up whatever needs to be tightened up and we're just gonna wait on the control arm bushings and the tie rod end and then everything should be back together. We just received the right tie rods. If this is the correct part number, ES2376. So it's two of these and and we also got the control arm bushings, which we're gonna install now. All right, so the tie rods are in and the wheels are on. And we had to do this just to make sure um, that the front sits right where we want it. We also threw the ones on in the back. And I think what we're gonna do is uh, lift it up a little bit from the front because it does rub, comes really close to this. And we really don't want to uh, roll the fender, so. We're gonna have to lift up the front end. and either way it's like leaning sitting lower in the front than the rear so we're just gonna level it out went to autozone and picked this up to grease the fittings right now so i'm gonna get to that and then we're gonna open up the uh the tie rods you know just to get the not an alignment but to get it to the alignment shop so let me go ahead and do that real quick all right so there it is i'm uh I took it around the block already and it's a bit too low so we're gonna raise up this side a little bit and also on the driver's side so you guys real quick this side needs to go up a little bit and um just so it won't rub so we're gonna mess with the torsion bars again and then we'll show you guys once we pull it out to the street one last time so we're thinking of just going up just enough so you could get a finger or even less than a finger as long as you can see the top of the tire and then we're going to remove the wheel liner so it's like some 10 millimeter bolts so i'm gonna pull out the truck for right now and then we'll get to it we're on our way to uh pet boys to try to get this thing aligned the steering wheel is way off right now it runs straight but the steering wheel is clocked to one side so we're gonna get that aligned and then i'll show you guys what the truck looks like we had to raise up the front a little bit, which sucks, but it was rubbing. So I'd rather have it not rub, but uh, it still kind of rubs when we hit a big bump. And um, we're gonna look into sway away torsion bars, and then uh, hopefully that will fix the problem. But for now, this will do, so I'll get back to you guys in a bit. All right, so this is where it's gonna be sitting for now. I kind of wanted to lower the front a little bit just to cover more of that wheel gap. But since it hits, well it rubs on the, since it rubs on the fenders, we're not gonna be able to do that. I'll show you guys the other side. And also, I don't know why, but this wheel's sticking out a little more than the driver's side. And we might have to get some spacers for the back. Maybe like a half inch spacer or so, just to get that wheel to stick out as much as the front. So these are Crown Victoria wheels. They are 16s on 205, 50, 16 inch tires. And the front is dropped with the two inch spindles. We had to raise it up with the torsion bars. All the bushings are new, upper and lower control arm. Uh, the what is it called the strut rod bushings as well the rear has a three inch belt tech uh, leaf springs also the the spindles are from belt tech and new leaf spring hanger bushings as well and it has some air shocks you guys could check out those videos and on our channel make sure to like comment subscribe follow us on instagram at yonke underscore oxc films you could ask your questions here in the comment section down below or on instagram we'll try to answer them as soon as possible catch you in the next one